What's up YouTube? Today we're going to do a bit of a different video. Today we're going to do a kind of investigation. Because a lot of times working as a data scientist can feel like detective work. But this time we're doing actual detective work because we're trying to attempt to solve the famous SQL murder mystery, which is available online. And if you haven't attempted it before, we'll leave a link down below for you to try. This is going to be a walkthrough. I haven't attempted it ever before. So this is going to be a live attempt, cut down a lot probably, but we're just going to give it a try and see where we end up. It should be a very fun way to use SQL and learn a bit more about it. And actually you do get a lot of detective work as a data scientist. So you might have to investigate a drop in a certain metric or an increase in another metric and have to find out what caused this increase or decrease. In this case, we're gonna to have to find out who committed the murder. So I tried to get my best Sherlock Holmes outfit impression, the best I could find. So let's just get into it. Okay, so we're actually gonna start off right here. The URL is mystery.nightlab.com. I'm gonna leave the link down below, as I said. And let's start here. There's been a murder in SQL City. The SQL murder mystery is designed to be both a self-directed lesson to learn SQL concepts and commands and a fun game for experienced SQL users to solve an intriguing crime. So no matter how far you are with your SQL skills, you can start off anywhere. There's a walkthrough and there's a complete tutorial for SQL as well. So you can really start from zero and get to it. But if you're comfortable, you can dive in below, which is just going to bring us to the next section in terms of experienced SQL sleuth, uh, starting there. And that's where we're gonna start. The tutorials are gonna be very basic, but this is pretty much our task, what we're tasked with. Not a lot to go by, by the way, but let's just start. A crime has taken place in the detective needs your help. The detective gave you the crime scene report, but you somehow lost it. You vaguely remember that the crime was a murder that occurred sometime on January 15th, 2018, and that it took place in SQL City. Start by retrieving the corresponding crime scene report from the police department's database. And now we're gonna have a short intro of how to explore databases here. So, this is going to show us, we're able to run our SQL code in here on the website, by the way, which makes it very cool. And this is just going to give us the names of the tables we have available in this database. We do have quite a few, nine, nine tables. And we also do have SQL that reports table, that creates the tables. Basically, this is usually given, it's just how the tables were constructed, which type of columns they have, what the data types are. But the rest is really up to us. If you're really comfortable with SQL, we can start here. And we do have a schema diagram here, which is basically what I would look at instead of these queries up here, because it shows you the table names as well as the column names, as well as the column data types. So we do have information about primary keys in there, the relationships between these tables, and we still have that walkthrough. So this is gonna be our playground. We're able to run SQL commands here, write up whatever we want to, and get to our solution. And this is gonna be the column or the, the cell that allows us to check whether our solution is correct. So we're just gonna to have to insert the name of the person that we think is the murderer, murderer in here. And then this query will check whether it's correct or not. I guess it'll just return true or false. Yep, so if we leave it at that, it's just gonna return the sentence that we're wrong and that's it. So all, 
all the task description is what's in here. So all we have these four lines. We have that diagram and we have that cell for our investigation. So the first thing I want to do is have a rough overview of the diagram in terms of what we have in there. Get fit now, check in. Maybe that's a gym membership table. We have interview, maybe some kind of police interrogation interview or something else. Get fit now member should relate to that gym. It seems to be a gym from the name and the column names, membership status in there. We have Facebook event check-in. Maybe people have checked into an event on Facebook and that way we're going to be able to tell whether a person attended the event and would be able to murder someone at that event, maybe. We have person, which is going to be very central for us to find the person and just report their name, <laughs> get it from there. We have information of whether they have a driver's license. Probably not everyone has a driver's license. And we do have income and solution, maybe income links to person. I don't know, it's not denoted in the diagram. We have solution, which maybe is used for checking whether our solution is correct or not. <laughs> and we have crime scene report. And I think that's where we're going to start because our task says, let's, let's do that again. A crime has taken place and the detective needs to help. The detective gave you the crime scene report, but you somehow lost it. So we have to find it again, the crime scene report. You vaguely remember that the crime was a murder, that's in bold, that occurred sometime on January 15th, 2018, and that it took place in SQL City. We should start by retrieving the corresponding crime scene report from the police department's database. So it actually tells us to just pull the crime scene report. I think these bold statements here are the fields we have to, the values that we need to filter by. So we need to find the corresponding field and then filter to these values. So crime type should be murder, date should be January 15th, and city should be SQL city. So let's do that. So let's say we want to select star from crime scene report. We can actually run that already and it should just give us every crime scene report. So in order to reduce that to the right date and type and city, we're just going to filter on these things. So date should be 2018-01-15 and type should be murder and city should be SQL city. See whether that runs. No data returned. Let's see. Date. Let's do that. I think there's an issue with hmm, probably the spelling of SQL City. Nope. Let's try running that again without these filters. So murder is lowercase, date is this type of number and SQL city is capitalized. So let's see where we're differing. City should be correct, murder should be correct, and date should be correct. And there should be an entry in here. Okay. So that works. We have the crime scene report for our murder on January 15th in SQL City. And the description says, security footage shows that there were two witnesses. The first witness lives at the last house on Northwestern Drive, 
The second witness named Annabelle lives somewhere on Franklin Avenue. So let's just get that description. Add it as a comment maybe. So that we can refer back to it. And yeah, so we do have information about two witnesses. I think we should check these next and see what they say. And hmm, let's see where we find them. But another thing we could do later on is to remove that column, uh, that row, that filter of crime type being murder and see what else happened on January 15th, 2018 in Escrow City. So there's an assault that happened, two assaults actually with bad descriptions. These seem to be just fillers or quotes. So there's not much to go by here. It could be that prior to the murder, the murderer did something else or something led up to that event. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So let's just leave it at the original query and work on the next one. So we do have a first witness on Northwestern Drive and a second witness called Annabelle who lives somewhere on Franklin Avenue. So let's see where we have street information in that diagram. We do have address number and address street name. I think address street name is what we want to look for. And yeah, that should give us the ID of a person. And using that ID, we could look up whether there's an interview with that person. That would be the witness report, basically, and gives us more information. I'll just check whether we can run queries selectively by just marking them. And uh, that way I could just leave that one up here. So let's say we want to check witness reports next. So let's look up every person in the person table. Let's see whether I can run that. Nope. So let's make these comments as well. That should work. It seems to be a, a huge table. So we should filter some more. So address, street name should be Northwestern Drive or Franklin Avenue. So we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna say it should be the Northwestern Drive or Franklin Avenue. Okay, so we do have a lot of people living there. But yeah, we do have a lot. Let's see whether we have an Annabelle in, Annabelle in there. So let's say the name should also be including Annabelle. So we're going to use like and say Annabelle should be included somewhere in the name. I think it's fine to do, to capitalize it because it should always be appearing at the start. Okay, okay, okay. So we do have that first person, Annabelle Miller, ID 16371. Let's note that as Annabelle Miller. I don't know whether we're gonna be able to find the second person straight away because there were a lot of people living on the other street, Northwestern Drive. 
So I think it's easier to do two separate queries. That should be Annabelle Miller. And then let's find the other person on Northwestern Drive, or at least try because we don't have any more information on them. I'll just double check the description again to see if I missed anything. Oh no, it's in that report, right? Second, first witness lives at the last house on Northwestern Drive. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. So we, are, we actually have something to go by here. Okay. So we can say that the last house on that street is the one with the highest address number. So let's just yeah, see whether we can find that manually by looking at all the people on Northwestern Drive. There's quite a lot of people on there, but we do have an address number and it should just be the highest the highest number should be the last house by definition. That's what I assume. I don't know what SSN is, but yeah, it's fair to assume the last house has the highest street number. First house should be the one with the lowest. So we could either use max here to find the highest street number. So if we select max address number and don't group by anything we get the highest one and then we could just select star where address street name is Northwestern Drive and address number is 4919 and that gives us Morty Shapiro, our second witness. Oh, that feels like real investigation work. 14887 is Morty's ID. And yeah, that's a way of doing it. We could also just select star from person and order by address number do that descendingly so the highest one will be on top we do have more on top again and then if we say limit one it just it should just give us the first row which gives us more T as well and that might be better because it would work for yeah we don't have to look up the value manually and then put it in the filter it could be slightly different and I think that's faster and a bit cleaner so let's leave it at that. That gives us that entry and we do have that ID here. Could just select ID as well, but I think that's fine. So next thing we want to do is look up these people in the interview table and see whether they said anything. So let's check interview table for witness reports see if we find them so select star from interviews interview we only have person ID and transcript in there so we should be able to just filter on the ID and that should be either Annabelle's or Morty's ID. It's actually called person ID here. We could be a type of join with these queries and combine them all to one, but I think for real investigation, you're going step by step. And yeah, it doesn't have to be one huge query because that makes it harder to follow, in my opinion. So the person ID should be in that list let's see whether that works I'm not using this often with manual IDs it does work we could also say where that is 16371 
or 14887. Same result, we do have transcripts, witness reports from both of these people. I was afraid there was only going to be one in there or none. But let's see. 14887, Morty says, let's note that down. Morty says, that formatting. Something happened at the gym. I should do multi-line comments, but I just wanted to, to look the same way. <laughs> so Morty says, I heard a gunshot and then saw a man run out. So murderer should be a man, apparently, if we trust Morty. He had a get fit now gym bag, which is the name of the table up there. So it's actually a gym. The membership number on the bag started with 48Z or Z. Only gold members have those bags. So the murderer is a gold member, apparently. The man got into a car with a plate that included H42W. So that is a great witness report. Much to go by, actual values. So if you, if you were to witness a crime, it's great to have this kind of info and write it down and report it. So this is amazing. I think we can look at the get fit now tables, filter on these values, and then have a short list of suspects already. So we're moving quickly. Let's see what Annabelle had to say. I want to make sure I don't mix up the ideas, IDs here. So Annabelle is indeed the one with, with ID 16371. It's a bit shorter. And she says she actually saw the murderer, the killer. Mm. She says, I saw the murder happen and I recognized the killer from my gym when I was working out last week on January the 9th. So the murderer, the killer, was in the gym on January 9th. That would help us reduce the short list of suspects from Morty's report and filter it to only people that were training at the gym on January 9th. So that is amazing as well. And yeah, that is just, I think that's how we should approach it. I think I want to filter based on what Morty said first and then add what Annabelle said. We're gonna assume these witness reports are true and they testified, what's the name? Basically, they're not allowed to lie. <laughs> they will get in trouble. So we're gonna assume these are true and I, yeah, we don't have any reason for believing that they would be lying. And they kind of fit as well. They both said it happened at the gym. And yeah, they both described the murderer as a gym member. So let's say the next thing we want to do is check get fit now tables for suspects and then later on we want to filter list of suspects to members being at the gym on January 9th. That sounds like a good plan. So let's look at that diagram again and look at the tables. So we have get fit now check in, which should probably tell us whether people, whether person trained on that day, because they would check in at the front desk or entrance to get in. Maybe they have like a key card and the table would store that information of whether they came in that day. We do have date and time of their visit which is great as well. 
and we have the member table which has a um, person ID which is used for our person table to look them up. There's another type of ID for the gym which is called membership ID in the get fit now check in table. If you still follow, basically there's a different ID for our person and a gym person. Yeah, so the gym has a different type of ID system and that's fine, we just need to be aware of that. Yeah, so I think we do have membership status in there which should, which should tell us whether they are a gold member and all that. So I think we have everything we need. So let's check get fit now member first. Get fit now member. Select star from that and filter based on what they said. So he had a get fit now gym back, which I think that just tells us that the man is a member. Membership number on the back started with 48Z. So let's say membership number includes 48, starts with 48Z. So membership number is actually ID in get fit now member. So ID is ID is like 48Z. I didn't explain that properly before, but that percentage is just an escape character that tells us or tells SQL that that value has basically that percentage sign is a wild card or Joker, it could be anything there. So it could be A, B, C, D, E, and then 48Z, and it just checks for whether the value ends with 48Z. But in our case, it should actually start with 48Z, so there could be anything behind 48Z, and the query would recognize it. And let's just read that again. Membership number on the back started with 48Z. So I think that's the correct way. Let's run that and see how much we get. I think we need to comment that query out to avoid that error. And yeah, we have only three people. First thing I see is that two of these are gold members and one isn't, so let's check for that as well. Because Morty said only gold members have those bags. Maybe you get it for free if you become a gold member. So membership status should be gold. That reduces our suspect list to only two. And the man got into a car with a plate that included H42W. Okay, so that is another thing to go by. We can probably assume they have a driver's license if they have a car, but that's not necessarily the case. If someone's, if someone is ready to murder someone, they would probably be ready to drive without a driver's license as well. But that's just speculation. That is another thing to go by, but we would, we, we would need to check another table. And we can still check that January 9th. Thing. So these are the two things I still want to check. Let's say, what should we do first? I think I want to go through the entire report of Morty first. I assume they were both working out on January 9th and then I would still have to check that, but it might be easy to just check whether they train on January 9th. <laughs> hmm. Could go two ways here. I think we should just get, we should just stick with, uh, finish that one report. We only have two more people, they both have a name that could be male. So that's looking good. Let's see, 
we have the person ID and I think we could look that up in the car table. Let's see. Oh, so we don't have a car table. We have a driver's license table, which tells us about their car. So if they have a car, but not a driver's license, we wouldn't know it. But yeah, we only have that link and we have ID in there. Keep in mind, this is our person ID and not the membership ID of the gym, which makes it slightly confusing. And it's what I want about, but I think that works. We have the plate number in there and we can check using that. Okay. So I'm just gonna take these people's person ID. I think we could actually join the other table. Select star from, well, basically we could just directly join that table driver's license. Yep. Leave these filters in there and join these on person ID being equal to ID in driver's license. Now GetFit now member also has a field called ID, so we need to be careful here and specify that. So it should be driver's license dot ID. And in this case, we want to check get fit now member dot ID. That was the gym ID. Okay, let's see where that still runs that entire query. No data returned. Mm. So do these people not have a car? Plate number, ID, driver's license ID. Ah, okay, so it's actually license ID, which is in person. So we need to go one more step and yeah, do it another way. So let's actually leave the query as it is. That was a bit of a mistake for me. I, was, I wasn't checking the diagram properly. So let's do that make a new query, check driver's license table for plates that include H42W. Okay. So maybe it's easier to just see these as separate things and then try to combine them. So plate number should include H42W, we're gonna do the same percentage trick and say there could be anything before and behind that H42W, that sequence, and we would pick it up. I think yeah, I might have miswrote the column name and I should also comment these out. I actually wrote it correctly. It's called plate number. We have three in there, three people. One of them is female. I think we can rule that person out because Morty said a man ran out. And yeah, we still have two people. ID, that is the license ID, by the way. We have information about how they looked, but we don't have information about their looks. Let's see. So we still need to link license ID and person ID and membership ID of the gym. So let's say 
we take these IDs and look them up in person. So we have this driver's license ID and this one as our suspects because these are the male ones. We could also just filter it to male as well. Now we have only two rows and say select star from person where now we need to look up that license ID yep it's called license ID and license ID should be either of these IDs okay so now we would get actual people again got to comment out. But these are actual people who have a license. We have the real ID now. And I think I see Jeremy from before in our suspect list. Didn't have Tusha in there. So Jeremy is our main suspect now. And he might, he might be the killer. So we do have that ID 67318. Oops. Let's give that a name as well. Let's add a description to what we are trying to do here. Check person table for license numbers. And we did add up with Jeremy Bowers who has an ID of 67318. Okay, so now if we check that get fit now table again for suspects, we might see that person again. Yes, Jeremy Bauer is in here with that person ID. We could also filter to that person ID, but I just looked it up manually. So maybe what we could do is look them up Oops. here again. Select star from get fit now member. Where person ID is Jeremy's ID. Let's check that table again. Yep, it's person ID. Let's see as well. So that should only give us that suspect. Let's see if that matches with what Annabelle said. Because Annabelle said, I saw the murder happen and I recognized the killer from my gym when I was working out last week on January the 9th. So last thing we want to do is check whether Jeremy Bowers attended the gym on January 9th. He is in the gym database. Could have also checked whether that other person is in the database and is a gold member. Let's do that quickly. Nope, not even in the gym database. So that is another confirmation for us. The other person who had a similar driver's license uh, and a similar car wasn't even signed up at the gym. Let's actually double check whether we have any information about the car. The man got into a car with a plate that included 40, H42W. Yeah, so a better crime, a better witness report would have maybe set the color of the car and the model, but we don't have that. So let's do hopefully the last thing. We don't need to filter the list of suspects anymore really because we only have one suspect left and that's Jeremy Bowers. So we need to check that 
check in table get fit now check in and see whether that membership ID checked in on that date January 9th and that membership ID hmm. let's pull it again and noted so actually we'll run that statement here again membership ID the one that starts with 48z Jeremy is actually a member from 2016 on so has been at the gym for a, for a while maybe that's why he's a gold member or yeah maybe that just was done at sign up but that's not important it's important is knowing whether Jeremy was at the gym on January 9th so get fit now check in I keep forgetting the name of the table it's correct get fit now check in where date is 2018-01-09 that should is that a string? I did use strings before so column is called check in date I don't think we need the time could use that later on or double checking things with witnesses yeah so we do have a few people checking in on the gym on that day but the membership ID should be this one and we only have one entry here because only one member has that ID and that person did check in Jeremy did check in on January 9th between 3 30 and 5 p.m. so I think that confirms our suspicion of Jeremy being the murderer we do have two witness reports which both match describe Jeremy as the person murdering someone at the gym having been in the gym the week before on January 9th we have that membership ID match we have that license plate match and we know that they're a gold member which we only know from the bag yeah I think that's everything I think that's a tough spot for Jeremy to be in he would have to do some explaining but I think for this assumption or this case it's fair to assume Jeremy is the murderer so we're gonna use Jeremy's person ID 67318 and put that into the solution maybe have a comment saying Jeremy Bowers seems to be the killer based on these witness reports so let's insert the name of the person we find we don't have to insert the ID that would be cooler I think because yeah, I need to check whether I spell it correctly Bowers let's do that once more hope there's a name in there yes Jeremy Bowers copying to be double extra sure and that's it congrats you found the murderer but wait there's more if you think you're up for a challenge try querying the interview transcript of the murderer to find the real villain behind this crime if you feel especially confident in your SQL skills try to complete this final step with no more than two queries use this same insert statement with your new suspect to check your answer 
Okay, so that does seem to be more behind it. There's a follow up on that, but I think we're going to end here for this video because I've already been recording for quite a while. But yeah, that has been insanely fun. It's been quite easy to get from one step to the other. It was quite logical, but there was really minimal guidance in terms of the initial instruction. We only have that crime scene report and a bunch of tables. We didn't have to use all of them. Maybe these will be used in the follow-up. But we did end up with a few lines of code, almost a hundred, and get to the right person. We didn't really need the second witness report, but it's always good to confirm and double check that. Maybe it's going to come in the follow-up again, or there's two ways to get to the solution. We could have checked the driver's license, or we could have checked the login, or whether the person attended the gym on January 9th. So both of these would have led to the solution individually, but together we have that kind of confirmation as well. So I think that's a really cool setup. I'm very intrigued in terms of what will be part of the follow-up and what you might have missed. I often say that I would assume that's the killer or the main suspect based on the information. Again, one person saying they have seen someone is not necessarily enough for a real investigation probably because that one person could be lying. That other person only saw them running out. They might have ran away from the murderer as well, from the real murderer. But I think based on that information, and if we assume everything is true, that is the correct solution. I might do the follow-up, but as I said, we're going to end it here. Hope you liked it. Check out this website yourself. If you want to do it yourself, maybe I missed something. There's probably more with a follow-up. Wondering how long it would be. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. It has taken me around 45 minutes to go through it while explaining everything and all that. But I wanted to do a little bit of a different video because I hit a thousand subscribers, then 2000. Had barely any dislikes on any of the videos. Had a great time. 1000 subscribers and hitting a certain amount of hours watched per month qualified me to be a YouTube partner which allows me to post um, pictures and polls and text on YouTube as well as monetizing the channel, which is great. Haven't been able to set that up yet though. But just want to say thank you, do a little bit of a different video. That's going to be it for me today. Check out my other videos. See you all next time. Bye.